thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. He's in this house right now, healing hearts. He's breaking chains. He's setting people free right now. This is not a typical church service. The Holy Spirit has invaded this room. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the hearts of people. Lord, we, we know we celebrate today as Mother's Day, but the truth is, is we can't make it through a day without you, God. We can't make it through a day without you, God. So we thank you that your word says that you're with us and are coming and are going. You go before us. You come behind us. You go around us everywhere we go. Oh, but God, I pray that you are the one that's seen, not us. See us, God, only through your eyes. We don't need people to know who we are. We need to make you famous again. That your power is real again. That your anointing is real again. That your healing virtue is in this house. Lord, that broken hearts and broken minds, broken, broken souls are being put back together right now. That deliverance is happening. Healing is happening. Everything is taking place that your word promised, not because the church is special in this room, but, but you're a good God. And you're just looking for people that will, will open up the door for your presence to come in and to do what it is that you do. Lord, I pray that we stop trying to figure this thing out, that we stop getting caught up in the mechanics and even our own egos and systems, but that we get back to a place where it's only you and you alone. That's all about you. It's all about you, God. Because we can't do anything on our own. We can do great things on this planet, but we cannot heal. We cannot touch hurts. We cannot bring people to salvation through ourselves but it has to be through you so Lord I pray from this day forward and I've prayed this multiple times that nobody ever walks in this door to hear this praise team or to hear this preacher but to just hear you because if our eyes are stayed upon you perfect peace could be at work perfect peace could be at work We're not going to rush this moment. We're not going to get into a sermon just because it's Mother's Day. We are going to stay right where the Holy Spirit wants us right now. There are things being healed in hearts, and I'm smart enough to know to move out of the way. Thank you, Jesus. There's an anointing in this room that's delivering it. It is... And what, what, what I'm saying when I say that is there are things that are inside of us that we haven't even shared with people that God wants to pluck out. But this moment, listen to me, church. If I say only this and we go home, this is the important thing. Prayer is a two-way communication. It's not just you telling God what you need. It's giving of yourself and Him giving back. This is not a moment where we talk about our finances, our cars, our watches, the wants that we have on this planet. But, but God, please teach me how to die to myself. There's people that you've put in my life, Lord, that you want to minister to through our words and through our hands, but we're broken. So how do we give that brokenness to you, God? Teach us. Teach us once again, Lord, to lay our head on your chest. To hear your heartbeat. To get quiet with you. To seek first the kingdom of God. This is going to be a different service today, church. So if you're uncomfortable with this, I, I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm just going to tell you today is going to be very, very different. There is a flow in this room that we do not want to disrupt. And I may lay hands on people and I may not. But there is something taking place that my sermon would mess up. There's somebody in this room. And I want you to be spiritual enough to worship. Because the truth is, is you're not here to receive from Alan Bailey. You're here to receive from the Holy Spirit. But there's somebody in this room right behind your right ear, and I mean right behind your right ear. I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if it's muscular or if it's, it's under the bone. I don't know, but there, it, there's no swelling, but there is pain and pressure 
And if you will pay attention, that is beginning to go. It, it hasn't already, it's not all gone. But it is going away right now. You're feeling it go away. God is showing you that he is healing you right now in Jesus' name. I don't need to know who you are. We're not trying to make preachers famous around here. It's what Jesus needs. If that's you, all I want you to do is to receive it. That's all I need you to do. Now you owe it to the Lord at some point after this service to let somebody know what God's done for you. But right now is not that moment. He's healing things. It's, it's not just hurts. He's healing physical things. He, he's healing. Uh, he's fixing spiritual things right now. Bridges are being rebuilt. There's somebody in this room, and, and, and I, I understand this all too well, but your left foot, it's in your left foot. It's in the top. It's almost like a nail goes from the top to the bottom of your foot when you walk. I don't know if you have a stress fracture. I don't know what's going on, but God is healing that right now. You can do anything that you could do before. Just begin to put pressure on that foot, and you'll see that God's healed that thing completely. Completely in Jesus' name. It's completely gone. It's completely gone. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you something while you're in, and I don't want to break the mode of worship. Hannah, you're released from the stage. If you want to take the kids on back, just do it very quietly. I want to tell you something. It was the last time we had this atmosphere in this church. I don't open my eyes much, and here's why. Because I need my eyes on him. Because people need healed, and they need things fixed. And when I put my eyes on it in the natural, I start trying to figure it out. But we, we, we can't. We just need to be a conduit for him. And the last time we had this type of atmosphere, my daughter, who is now taking these kids to the back room, had had so much pain in her gallbladder for over a year that she couldn't have surgery. We didn't have the money for her to have surgery because of different things. And she was completely healed. And now can eat anything she wants to, can work without any pain. There's nothing wrong with her. And it's not because she's my daughter, but because she's his. And he's wanting to do that for so many people. I may not call out or deal with what you're dealing with. But there are things in this room that God is wanting to heal. So all I want to do right here, right now, and this is not... Uh, this is not me giving you the instruction. This is what the Lord said. If you are able and you are bold enough to come up here for us to pray for you for healing, we are gonna, we're not going to expect anything out of you other than for you just to receive. Anybody on this stage, if you need healing in your physical body for anything, I want everybody from the stage to the sound booth. And you guys back there, do not hide behind that equipment. If you need to be up here, I need you up here now. Right now, I just need you to move up here now. If you need healing for anything, we're just going to believe God. We're not trying to put on a show here. We're not trying to create conferences. We're not, we're not worried about cameras. As a matter of fact, this probably will be deleted. But we need to see bodies made whole because that is what the Word promised. That is what the Word promised. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to wait. If you need physical healing in your body, come on up to the front. Physical healing in your body. <clears throat> Physical healing in your body. In your body. April, I'm going to need you. So if you can find somebody to hand Piper off to with Aaron's permission, of course, I'm going to need you with me. Thank you, Jesus. There's some amazing things happening already. I, I know I can feel some, some chains breaking in some areas. and uh, That just lets me know that today is going to be a, a freedom day for those of you that are up here and many that haven't come up. Many that haven't come up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go down and we're just going to agree. We're not, I'm not going to listen to me. Please listen. I'm not going to try to give you a word of knowledge unless the Lord speaks something different. We're not trying to get a reaction out of anybody. There's an anointing in this room for your healing and all I need you to do is know that God said he wants you whole and if the creator of the universe said he wants you whole then when we touch and agree your job is to receive it that's it and you'll see me looking around and, and with my eyes closed that has nothing to do with anything that God is training me to keep my eyes on him 
on the ministry in front of me because if I get focused on you, my compassion will pull me away from what he's saying. So just know that when we come to you, all we need you to do is receive because this is a two-way community. He's already given it, but he needs to give you your problem. You need to give your problem to him. He can give you something to fill that problem. And it'll fix it in Jesus' name. So, April, we're going to start right down here. We're going to start right down here. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Your word says that you are the God that healeth thee, Lord. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet. The word is at work. And you just receive everything. Lord, I call her whole in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Angela, would you put your hand on your abdomen? April, would you put your hand on hers? In the name of Jesus, every wit whole. Your word says, Lord, just like we said last week, when, as a father, when I sat by the bed of my child, I cry and I say, if I could take this pain, I would. And you did that through Jesus. And we give you what you paid for. In Jesus' name. Just receive it. Just so you're on fire. Just receive it. Just receive it. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The finishing. The work is already finished in the Spirit. Lord, I thank you for faith. We're receiving now in Jesus' name the finished work of the cross. We thank you for the report of the great physician. Lord, we thank you that from this moment forward, every single portion. <laughs> mm. Healing is running through your veins, both of you. Both of you, just receive it. Just receive it because he's good. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He's breaking the weariness. He's breaking the weariness. Two-way street. Communication's two-way. She knows your word, Lord. She knows your word, God. <laughs> the next report that you get will be vastly different from the last visit. The next report that you get, the next report will match your faith. Every single cell in her body touched by the blood of Jesus right now. See, sometimes we, we, we look for reaction when it's just receiving. We react because we've got it. When the check comes in the mail that you've been waiting on, you react because you got it, but the check was there. So you've already got it. <laughs> you've already got it. There it is. There it is right there. There it is right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wholeness in every single area in Jesus' name. Use these hands. Use these hands to bring healing and deliverance because you matter, not because the ministry does. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do you have something? Thank you, Lord. Now, son, you haven't even told me anything was going on, but I don't need to know. But you know how to receive. In the name of Jesus, under this anointing, 
Wholeness, Lord. Wholeness in every area. Lord, I thank you that physically, physically you've already healed. He's receiving it now. He's already got it. But you just spoke to me to say every wit whole and not my will, but your will. You want him whole more than I do, and I'm his dad. So, Lord, I put him in your hands. I thank you that he's whole. You are the great physician, and the good report is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. to the very spirit that dwells inside of Paul. Rise up and be what you were called to be. We bind any voice that would hinder the grace on his life. <laughs> and Lord, I thank you. I thank you that everything, the clouds are clearing, the healing is here, the mental strain of trying to figure this out. The life that he wants is now in you. Let it go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That was you. That was you with that pain right there, right? That was you. In the name of Jesus, we speak to whatever that was. And you don't even matter because you can't stay. Because Paul is whole by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's on you. It's okay. It's okay. The glory is on you. But now we need to get it in you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that physically you've already made a work happen. We thank you for the finished work. But, God, I thank you right now that the broken heart is being sewed back together. Wholeness is taking place. <laughs> Lord, you can understand more than anybody else this broken heart. We put it in your hands now, God. Reba, just rest. <sighs> just rest. Just rest. Just rest, just rest, just rest. Just rest. <laughs> there it is right there. There it is right there. Just rest. Just rest. You just felt him wrap his arms around you. You just rest. You just rest. You just rest. <laughs> receive that just receive that just receive it Jeremy you haven't told me this but as I lay hands on you that the Lord said there's been some extra and added stress that has caused you to, to feel almost sick at times when you wake up in the morning and all of that's going away right now in Jesus name because we're casting the whole of our care on him right now in Jesus name you're not designed to carry pressure. 
you're designed to carry his glory. So, Lord, I thank you that from this moment forward, his eyes are stayed upon you and perfect peace is in his heart. And where the enemy is trying to get in to remind and to say this is that and the other things, none of those voices matter from this moment forward because the glory is on this family. In Jesus' name. Is there anybody else? Anybody else up here? We got everybody? Were you up here or you? Yeah, okay. All right, so let me say a few things today <clears throat> that the Lord has told me before I walked out on this stage. And I'm, I'm just going to say them, and if we dismiss early, then that's great. The Bible says to seek, to knock, and it'll be open to seek, and you'll be fine, and you'll find. The Bible says that with all of your heart seek the Lord. The Bible says be still and know. To be still and know. And I'm going to say what the Lord said to me before I walked out on this stage. And then we're going to get some, some kingdom business done on some other things. And then everybody's going to go enjoy Mother's Day. But the Lord said very clearly to me this. I am a father of ten kids. <clears throat> And in my house, you have guitars and keyboards and drums and stuff. And in my house, and much like your lives, there's chaos and there's things and there's ball games. And I grew up on the Gulf Coast and there's hurricanes and there's storms. And we learned to sleep through a lot of stuff. I don't know about you, but I can sleep through. If it's crazy, I can go right to sleep. But if it's quiet, I can't rest. And the Lord said the enemy has successfully trained his people to rest the wrong way. That you've got to learn to be quiet again. The hardest thing to do is to be quiet with yourself. And when you get quiet with yourself, we, we've even been tricked into this because, because we, 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 we have to have the TV on at night when we sleep or, or we have to have a white noise machine or, or even if you go to the beach, you gotta kick the door open to hear the waves, right? But we have been tricked by the enemy to not be quiet. And the Lord is correcting my path. And I'm shifting back into some gears that I, bit, you, I, I left a long time ago. And he's pulling me back to it. And, and, and people are being set free not because I'm good. But because I've learned to move out of the way and let him do his thing again. Because I, whether you know it or not, as the pastor of this church, can successfully stop God. And you can too. And he says, be still and know. How can you know when you go to prayer? How can you know when you walk out what he said if you're not still? If you can't rest unless there's chaos, how can you know? Because you're not still. You cannot hear God in chaos. You can, I'm talking about directional for your life. You cannot hear God in chaos. And prayer, listen to me, prayer is a practice you have to learn you have to be excellent at prayer I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a couple of examples and then we're gonna dismiss my son right here he's pretty ain't he looks just like his daddy a little taller a little buffer but he looks just like his daddy I can still take him uh, would you agree with me that he is probably one of the most excellent drummers on that drum set yeah I agree he, he is he is really good He has his mama and his daddy's nature that if he's going to do it, bless God, he's going to be better than everybody else on the planet doing it. Right? Am I right? There are certain things he won't try because he's like, I got to be the best. I don't want to try that. I want to do this. What people don't know, well, if you, they may know, is about, what was it, four, three or four years ago when they did this little youth band thing? They tried this little youth band deal three or four years ago, and he climbed up on daddy's drum set. That's when I played the drums. And stunk. Right? Be honest. It was horrible. And he walked off the stage and, and, and I told him, I said, I love you, but that, that was horrible. Because I'm a good dad. And I said, I love you. But you can't play like me just because you look like me. You got to practice. And boy, has he practiced. He's better than I ever was. I made a lot of money playing drums. And he's 
Well, I mean, you hear it every Sunday, right? Because of the effort. Because of the effort. Prayer is the same way. Prayer, let me tell y'all something. Prayer is not reading a couple scriptures and telling God what you want that day. Prayer is quiet. Let me tell, and some of us, especially those of us of the Pentecostal persuasion, we like to be loud. Sometimes you got to hush. Sometimes you got to hear him. Because if we've learned to function in chaos, and then when it's quiet, we're uncomfortable, then we've removed our ability to be in the place he demands us to be to hear. So if we say, oh, it's all good, it's all good, I could just, you know, my wife amazes me. Because when she's got to minister, she can have 10 kids running around and, and dishes going and painting the outside of the house and spraying for bugs and, and, and remulching the, uh, the outside and repaving the driveway and still put a sermon together. Me, I got to have quiet. Like I have to get away from everybody. But she's learned to function that way just in writing the sermon, okay? Just in writing the thoughts down. But when it comes to hearing God, it's the side of her tub where it's quiet. So I've been given an instruction to give to you today, and then I'm done. When you leave here, it is time to, you know, the last three weeks have been a lot of instructions because the Holy Spirit's trying to get us back to that power-filled church. Because we understand we can build big churches, but what, what can we do in those churches? You got to let him move. So the instruction was to tell my people to get back to the quiet place, to be still so they can know. You ever tried to be quiet without your mind pulling you to social media? You ever tried to be quiet without your brain starting to sing a song? You, you ever tried to be quiet and look at yourself in the mirror? How long? I don't take long to get away from that. You, you, you ever tried to be really quiet before you start beating yourself up because you haven't done this today, you really need to do that? Or, or, or you might be the opposite and think you're the most awesome person on the planet and you get, try to get quiet but you're telling yourself how great you are. I don't know who you are. But the truth is nobody knows how to be really quiet. Catherine Kuhlman, who is somebody that I really, really listen to. And some of you may not even know that name. But Catherine Kuhlman's story, the, one, of, one of the greatest healing ministries on the planet, documented. She had doctors sending patients to her meetings. Um, they have pictures of her. I showed Jordan one this morning because she's one of the people that I, I look to when it comes to prayer because obviously she gets her results. There are pictures of her standing on stages and and inside somewhere now inside and these pictures were taken in the 60s and 70s and they didn't know how to doctor them then and they're documented that they're not doctored and she's praying just over a crowd not over a person and lightning behind her now that's what God wants to do not with the TV preachers but with everybody in this room and it comes with being quiet being still and know. He says, be still and know that I am God. And know. how do you, I, you know how I know if you know or not? By the chaos that surrounds you. When I slow down and I look at my life and I'm like, I know that I have knowledge, but do I know? A lot of people have knowledge, but do you, have you had the experience? Have you had the encounter? Have you had the moment? Can you say, I, I have a ton of knowledge about certain things, but there are certain things I've never done, I've just read about. And God wants us to get past all of that rhetoric and to be still. That's his instruction. You do with it what you want to. But he said to be still and to know. And there is something on the inside of all of us that he wants to pull out that only we can do. I'll tell you this, and I'm, then I'm, I'm, we're going we're gonna to take care of some, some ministry stuff, and then we're done. I've gotten to where I'm 48 years old, and because of the trash on TV, even on cartoons, I watch Gunsmoke. That's what I watch. Or John Wayne or something. And I was watching an old Western, and it's obscure. You know, I, I don't even know the name. don't even know who the actors were in it. It was just an old movie. And there's this little kid that bought a harmonica from a guy. The guy was playing Dixie on the harmonica. And the little kid bought it, 
and 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 he t uh, for like a penny, two cents, I don't know. And he runs home, and and somewhere in between the town and to his farmhouse, he's in tears. And he's telling his mama, that guy ripped me off. That man ripped me off. That man stole my money. And she's like, what are you talking about? And, and he pulled out the harmonica and he said, he told me it had Dixie in it. And he would blow in it and it wouldn't play Dixie. But he could if he took the time. But he didn't understand. He wanted what somebody could do without learning how they did it. And a lot of churches pray, a lot of people have learned to pray for 45 seconds because we want what we've seen somebody else walk in. Or we want what somebody else has. Or we want this or we want that. We have to die to that stuff. The greatest prayer is when your prayer is, how can I wait on you? The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall be filled. Do you understand that word wait is not what we think? They that wait upon the Lord shall be filled. We think, he's late. That's not what, the word wait means to serve and to minister to. See, when I, listen, when I go to a restaurant, somebody's waiting on me. Which is what, when, when, when the Bible says to wait upon the Lord, it's for you to go to him and say, what can I do for you? And the enemy has perverted the entire church through healing, through grace, through prosperity, through salvation for us to focus on what we get. Last point. If you read your Bible, you will find out everything he gave you and you don't have to ask. You just have to receive. But you do have to wait on him. You have to wait. You have to wait. So what we're going to do because in an anointing like this, I'm so careful not to put Alan in it. I learned a long time ago, the minute I get over into Alan, things start going sideways. So to not move over into a situation where it's my opinion, we're gonna begin to move this, ser this service back over to the worship side. But before we do that, we're gonna handle something that the Lord uh, had already spoke to me to do, but then it was brought to my attention and then we, it, we kind of let it ride and then the Lord's talked to me again about it this morning. So if you get everybody where you're at, if you'll just, if you'll just, uh, if you'll just stay in that worship mode, April, if you will join me, come on up here. And I need you two to come on up. Justice, I want you to join me too. We're gonna come right here. If you guys would just stand this way. Come on over here, sweetheart. These are, y'all know justice, right? Everybody knows justice. Everybody likes justice, kind of. <laughs> justice will be graduating in a month from the Becoming Center. And uh, justice, is, he wants to stay on and, and help us out and, and, and take the next guy and train him like he was trained. Isn't that awesome? I think that's great. That's what we're, yeah, that's what we're supposed to be doing. <clears throat> but uh, uh, on the bigger scale, his parents called to do something very, very similar to the Becoming Center for women. And that's about to begin. We believe in God for the building and all of this stuff. So, and I'm going to tell this quick story, and if we edit it out, that's cool, because I don't want to offend anybody, but this is true. When I was standing in your shoes and had instructions from two men of God that if I named them, the world would know who they are, to go to a certain ministry that we all know and get them to lay hands on me, they refused. For whatever reason, they refused. And I didn't let it wound me because that's between them and Jesus. But I made up my mind that I would never do that to another ministry. So you guys, you have a pastor, you have wonderful pastors, you have a wonderful grace and anointing to do this. So all our job is to do is to be the big brother and big sister and to believe God with you, okay? Now, these right here are two Becoming Center coins with your names on them. On, uh, there's, there's no value other than a point of contact. And they have been saturated in prayer. So we're going to give these to you. April, if you'll give that to her. We're going to give this to you. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Justice, get in here. We thank you for a ministry that the eyes are stayed upon Christ. 
We don't build ministries for money. We don't build ministries for fame. We don't build ministries for title. We don't step into this to do anything other than to help those that you've called us to help. So, Lord, I pray that, it, that we keep our eyes on you, that we never, ever make this about anything but Jesus. God, we call in the building to house as many women as she can handle. We call in the counselors, the staff. I know what it's like to build this from the ground up. So, Lord, I pray for the partnerships and the voices around her to be focused on you and the vision, not why she can't. And, Lord, I pray for an open window of heaven for wisdom and proper steps. And, Lord, we thank you that we despise not the day of small beginnings. And, Lord, right now, we impart... We impart the anointing to deliver because that is what you said to do. Not because we're special, but by this point of contact, just like like prayer clause, just like shadows in the, the the New Testament, just like people being delivered in the very room that Paul stood, not because Paul was special, but because you were. We thank you that we'll hear stories like we hear in the Becoming Center and greater. We thank you that every voice that rises up against what they're doing would be silenced because their heart is in your hands. And Lord, I thank you that from this moment forward that these two are in your heart just as much as you're in theirs. And that every single woman they take in will be designed to be there. Not the headaches, not the problems, not the people trying to beat a case, but the ones that need what they have to give. And I pray that they have the wisdom to know who to get rid of if they need to. Because you need an atmosphere where miracles and deliverance can happen, not just people in the room. Thank you for their anointing and grace, and I thank you for our small part in it. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Y'all let them know that you love them because this ministry matters. I love you, man. You guys are going to do great. You're going to do great. You're going to do great. You're going to do great. You guys just do what God calls you to do the right way. Amen. All right. Well, I told you today would be different. And when I walked out of the door, I wasn't expecting it to be that different. But people were healed today. Things were set free. And chains were broken off of lives. And and that's really, a sermon can't do that. But he can. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray and we're going to release. As far as offering goes, they'll be at the back. I'm not even going to deal with that today because it's it's green paper, y'all. I mean, if if it has a hold on you that much, it's your problem, not mine. Uh, But just do what the Lord says. But I'm telling you, God is trying to pull you to the place of being still. And if you don't believe me, if you got kids, send them on somewhere and try to go to sleep tonight. And you'll find out just what still really means. When she talks about that place on the side of her bathtub, uh, uh, well, our bathtub, when she talks about that, I, I get that, see, because she will tell you that I will come in here and get in this office in this corner away from everybody. But even then I fight turning on music. It's amazing to me that we, that Satan has tricked us into thinking that even when we go in to be still, as long as we turn on worship, we're okay. That's, that's still not what he asked for. So just remember as, as we leave today that, that God has called you and given a very specific instruction. Praise team, team, all of y'all. Everybody in this room, including me, that God has said specifically to this church, I'm calling you to be still. And then God is going to start using you on your job or wherever you're at. You're going to start seeing amazing things happen. Because if you're still and you hear him, then it doesn't matter what other people say. Amen? Amen. Do you feel like you've been to church today, although it's been different? Amen. And I thank you guys for being patient. Y'all stood up a long time, but I do it every Sunday. Praise the Lord. All right. Father, I thank you for this group. Everybody that was in this room today, you anointed them to be here. You appointed them to be here. And for whatever reason, this message should have done whatever it was sent to do because it's not about me. It's all about you. 
So, Lord, I thank you that that impartation happened today. I thank you that healing happened today. I thank you that deliverance happened today. I thank you that broken hearts have been sewn back together. I thank you that we get to go back to a place where we can be still with you. And, Lord, as we leave this place today, we thank you that, that, that as people give, we just call it blessed beyond measure. And, God, we thank you that we know all the budgets here are met, and you're so good to us. But we pray that you bless the people that give. We thank you that as they tithe, your word is true. The devourer is rebuked. But Lord, more than any of that, I pray that as we leave here and we celebrate our mothers because they are special, without them we would not be here. We thank you that it was your design. And I pray that you bless every single one of them. In Jesus' name, amen.